Chadell, State Director for AARP Washington. Thank you for joining us today. I want to welcome you to this exciting discussion about COVID-19. AARP Washington is a nonprofit, nonpartisan member organization that's been working to promote the health and well-being of older Americans for more than 60 years. In the face of the global coronavirus pandemic, AARP is providing information and resources to help older adults and those caring for them. For more than a year now, older adults have been following guidance in order to stay safe during the pandemic. COVID-19, of course, is still with us and will be for some time. But we're now seeing the promise of broad vaccine distribution across the state. We seem to be doing a great job with vaccinating the 65 and older population, with 74% having at least one dose of the vaccine, but a quarter of that group still hasn't gotten their vaccine. And our 50 to 64 population still has a long way to go with 50% getting at least one dose. We will be discussing the current state of COVID-19, beginning with the Honorable Jay Inslee, Washington State's governor. And later we will be hearing from Washington State Secretary of Health, Dr. Umar Shah. And we will be discussing the current landscape of COVID-19 and answer your questions. Now, if you've participated in one of our Teletown Halls before, you know this is like a radio talk show and you have the opportunity to ask questions live. If you'd like to ask a question of our guests, all you have to do is press star three on your telephone keypad and you'll be connected to a staff member who will note your name and question and put you in the queue. Again, press star three if you have a question about vaccines or COVID-19 for our guests. If you're listening through our Facebook audio stream, please leave your question in the comments section. Well, we already have quite a few people joining our call while I've been speaking, and I want to extend a welcome to all of you. My name is Doug Shadell, State Director at AARP Washington. I want to thank you for joining us on, for this important conversation. First, I'd like to introduce Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who has led the state in response to the pandemic since Washington became the U.S. epicenter last March. Thank you, Governor, for taking time out of your schedule to be with us today. And we're a more, more than a year into this pandemic what can you tell our folks um, they need that need to know um, as we begin to see a light at the end of this tunnel? Well, thanks for a chance to talk with this group. I think this group of Washingtonians are some of the most important people in our state, and the reason is twofold. They're they're they fit two categories of people in this call. Number one, they're the most at-risk Washingtonians of this potentially deadly disease right now. 90%, 90% of all the fatalities that people have suffered are people in this age group of, of over 60. Uh, that is an incredibly uh, targeted disease. And, and unfortunately, as you indicated, uh, fully 25% of our, of our uh, older Washingtonians have not even had one dose that means today there are, and you can envision this, of 300,000 Washingtonians. That's, you know, several Washington State or University of Washington football fields full of older Washingtonians who are essentially walking around with a big target on their backs of this COVID virus. And this thing is a potentially deadly disease. And unfortunately, it remains very, very active and is actually in, uh, in increasing in our state. And so the situation is, is we have a group of Washingtonians uh, who are living good, you know, productive, vigorous lives, and we love them like crazy, and they're in danger right now, and, 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 and they're not protected. So that's number one. That's one of the reasons this, the group on this call is so important. But the second reason is that it's also the most effective and influential, because the most in, or the most influential and influ, uh, influential people are those who talk to their friends and their colleagues and their neighbors and their their coffee clatch and their coworkers and their fishing buddies to to say man come on join me get a vaccine and showing that it's safe and and sharing scientific information with people so now this is a group of people who is who are simultaneously most at risk but also the most powerful in the ability to influence and save other people's lives. And saving lives is a, a blessing. Firefighters do it. Uh, physicians do it. Nurses do it. But anybody can do it. All of us can be lifesavers by talking to uh, our loved ones and our pals and our friends and our neighbors, encouraging them to get the vaccine. Now, this should be obtained by anyone over the age of 16. But again, because 90% of the fatalities have been people of over uh, the age of 60, we, we like to really kind of focus on on that group. 
Now, I should reiterate, it's not just your, you know, people of age. Tell your kids, tell your grandkids uh, to sign up as well. They are at risk. We actually are seeing an increasing number of younger people, and younger, that means under 50 in my book, uh, that are now ending up in the hospital because we have these new variants that are coming on that are different than the original virus. It is mutated, and we're having more of our teenagers and our 30- and 40-year-olds ending up in the hospital. So, um, again, everybody on this call can be a champion and a lifesaver. Now, there's another reason this is important. You know, we all hopefully are wearing masks. We're continuing to socially distance as appropriate. We're doing basic hygiene. But we need to continue doing those things. And we and, and it helps to get the vaccine because the, every time we knock down an infection, it makes it more likely we won't have to close up some of our uh, things we enjoy in life, like restaurants and gyms and, and movie theaters and the like. And unfortunately, we've had to reduce some of these activities recently because the uh, transmissions have gone up and infections have gone up in three of our counties and, and are going up in quite a number of our counties, actually. So this not only saves lives, but it helps keep our community active so we don't have to put on the shelf for some period of time the things that we love doing so much. So there's a lot of reasons to do this. So we are kind of, just to give you a, a, a download where we are, we're on the cusp of a fourth wave of this virus. We've had three waves. We are beginning to experience a fourth wave. We had our a group called the Institute for Disease Modeling who's been briefing us every week, and they had some very disturbing information for us today indicating that the variants, the varieties, the new mutant strains are, are more transmittable and potentially more dangerous and that this is accelerating the rate of, of growth of the infection in our state. So it's a moment for uh, profound commitment and, and, and awareness, and I just want to encourage everyone to uh, protect themselves and their loved ones uh, right now. We, we know these things work, by the way, and, and I think throughout this we've had frustrations and concerns and loneliness at times, but we, we know we can do good things. We, we have done good things. We've saved thousands of lives. Um, in fact, the New York Times looked at the national statistics and believed that if other states had done what we have done, we would have saved 200,000 lives across the country. We've probably saved anywhere from 10 to 17,000 lives in our state because of the things we've done. So we know that these things can work and that they're worth doing. So I just want to encourage folks in this regard, I want to ask you to help your state and yourselves, most importantly, because we care about you. And uh, life's pretty pretty precious. So uh, I hope that we can all uh, take care of ourselves. Thanks. Th- thank you, Governor. Those, those are really important comments. If you're just joining us, you've just been listening to Washington Governor Jay Inslee. My name is Doug Shadell from AERP, and we're doing a live teletown hall on the coronavirus and efforts to stop the virus with uh, getting everybody vaccinated. If you'd like to ask a question of the governor, press star three on your telephone keypad and you'll be connected with a staff member who uh, you can ask your question. And later we're going to be joined by Secretary of Health, Dr. Umar Shah, who's going to answer um, questions for you as well. Um, Let's start with a question from, we've got quite a few Facebook questions actually. This is from Kathy Park and it's for the governor. We've had our vaccines, but are still concerned about going out and being safe. And we've heard this. This is a theme in a lot of questions. Um, we've got the vaccine, and we, but we're still concerned. We mask up and safe distance, but we want our lives back. What can we do to continue to protect ourselves without fear? Well, I, you know, I think particularly if people are vaccinated and have complete vaccination and allow some period of time to go by after your shots, either for, you know, if, if it's a two-dose regime, you want to wait a couple of weeks to make sure you're fully vaccinated. But particularly in that situation, I'm trying to think of things, you know, one cannot do, uh, particularly in the company of other people who are vaccinated. Uh, certainly uh, outside, we maintain the ability to do virtually everything we could. And inside, wearing masks, if we're socially distanced, 
and with you know a small group uh, that is that is uh, largely allowed um if you wear a mask at this point and particularly if you're all vaccinated these things are all available to us now as long as we maintain an appropriate distance now we do have some restrictions on some of in three of our counties for some of our restaurants and gyms and the like to to minimize the number of people that are in a restaurant but these things pretty much are available as long as we use masks at this point and maintain some degree of distancing which is a good thing. Yep. Uh, go to Mariners game, 25% occupancy. So it's just that we just got to think a little bit about how to do it. It's much more about asking ourselves how to do it rather than whether to do it. And so, you know, there are some limitations on crowd size, but in small groups of two, three, four people, these are things we can all do uh, largely. And Dr. Shaw, do you want to... Uh, do you have any comments about that, Dr. Shaw? I want to make sure I'm giving the straight scoop here. Governor, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. Is that, you know, when we're you know, once once you're vaccinated, the the risk uh when you're around others that are vaccinated, even indoors, is, is that now comes to extremely low. And so you actually can uh do many of the things or all the things that you just described. And outdoors it's absolutely uh, markedly better, but we want people to still wear masks outdoors because, first of all, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, you don't know if they've been vaccinated or not been vaccinated. So we want to make sure people are wearing masks so we show that masks are important. But indoors, when you're in a small group of people who have all been vaccinated, you know, actually, um, they're, you know, we, we've been saying that you can actually even take down the masks uh, as long as no one has any symptoms and no one is you know, exhibiting any other issues. So I think you're absolutely right. Wow, that's good news. That's really good news and encouraging. We may actually headed, be headed back towards some semblance of normalcy. Let's go back to the phones now. Uh, we have Randy from Castle Rock. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just uh, wondering if you're doing anything about the false uh, information about the vaccine that's all over the Internet. And a lot of people are believing in that. And uh, I just wondering if something was being done about that. Well, yes, uh, we're doing everything we can. Uh, we have uh, we've had a very extensive paid advertisement program to share information with the public. We speak every chance we get. We have had uh, a very concerted effort to work with community organizations to share scientific information as well. Hundreds of them. And we're doing this in 32 languages because we're a diverse state. So we have a very extensive effort to share valid scientific information with people. But this is a challenge because there is so much false information floating around. And, as you know, the old saying, a lie can travel around the world three times before the truth gets out of bed. So this <laughs> is a challenge. It's one, it's one of the reasons why we're on this call because we're hoping that everybody on this call can become a leader and share scientific information with people themselves. And as I indicated, it's a powerful group. People trust you, your friends trust you, your coworkers, your families, your kids trust you. So we hope that you will become uh, one who can uh, purvey valid scientific information. And the thing is, this, this, these are just have been shown to be extremely safe. We take medicines all the time, aspirin, oral contraceptives, rheumatoid arthritis, we take drugs all the time that have some risk associated with them. The risk of this vaccine are hardly possibly even to identify. It's an extremely safe medication compared to things we don't even think twice about. Uh, the complications for aspirin are much more uh, potentially uh, troublesome than anything that's been demonstrated with this vaccine. Now, you have heard about six cases of some blood clots out of 7 million doses, and we don't even know whether these were really associated with the, with the product or not. Look, even if these cases turned out to be associated with the product, you're more likely to be struck by lightning going out and playing golf today than taking this vaccine. So these are extremely, have been shown to be extremely safe uh, over you know, now millions and millions of people who have taken the product. 
so I just hope people will use their own leadership with their circle of friends and neighbors uh, to spread that information. If you're just joining us, you're listening to a Teletown Hall with Governor Jay Inslee and Secretary of Health, Dr. Umar Shah. Uh, and if you'd like to ask a question of our guest, please press star three on your telephone keypad. Although we've got quite a long list of people who have called in already. Let's go back to the phones. Uh, Remy in Shoreline. Yes, That's sir. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I have this uh, gathering to celebrate my daughter, uh, Dr. Physical Therapy graduation for 50, 60 people. Uh, we're planning to do it outdoor, and most of the attenders are already vaccinated. So my question is, is it allowed? And we're still going to follow the PPE rules. Um, do we have to have fear that someone can report us or whatever? Yeah, where is your event going to be? We are in the backyard, in our home. Yeah, where, where is um, that? We have a very yeah. big backyard, and we still have Good. to follow PPE. It's outdoor. Yeah. Well, I'm going to – I don't believe there's a restriction necessarily on an event size in that regard. We would always encourage people to wear masks in that situation, uh, you know, because you can't be sure everybody's sure they're socially distanced. And the host and the hostess can be, you know, helpful in that regard uh, so that people cannot uh, jeopardize each other. Uh, and, and if we do that, we can maintain a safe situation. It does require a little bit of education by the host and hostess to make sure people are adequately separated while they're eating. Uh, but the masks help a whole bunch. And uh, congratulations. It's so exciting to have a new physical therapist. You know, I'm in this age group as an older Washingtonian, and we love our physical therapists. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only ways we can get around. My... <laughs> so congratulations. Yeah. Um, Governor, we have an email question. This has to do with the fourth wave. I'm concerned with all the news of the emerging variants. Um, you addressed this earlier, but a possible fourth wave. What, what does it mean if we hit a fourth wave? Do we go back to some of the um, restrictions we had a year ago, say, or what, what are the practical implications of that? And hopefully we won't well, we have, have to do it. Right. Well, we basically have uh, the law of the state of Washington right now is that we have certain metrics in place so that if the variant continues to be uh, dominant and dangerous and does drive these numbers up and does drive the number of hospitalizations over certain levels, then automatically a county goes back into a previous more restrictive phase. Unfortunately, we the whole state advanced to stage or phase three, which was great. But unfortunately, three of our counties uh, regressed. Their increased uh, case numbers went up over the metric, and their hospitalizations also went up over the metric. And so they had to go back to phase two, which is a reduced occupancy of restaurants and gyms and the like. And uh, if that trend continued, more counties would find themselves in that situation. Now, they might mm -hmm. also actually have to go back to phase one, ultimately, if things got bad enough, which meant that we would have to go back to not having indoor dining and, and indoor gyms and the like. We obviously don't want to see that happen. And we don't think it has to happen. Now, these variants are apparently much more transmissible. They just create a greater viral load, and that means that you get much more transmission. And we think we're seeing that. We think we're seeing a combination right now of increased transmission due to the variants and probably also due to us sort of dropping our guard because we've kind of got a sort of a little overconfident and we're not wearing masks as often as we should. We're not socially distanced as often as we can. And as a result, you know, we've had three counties have to go back. So this is something that really calls for all of our uh, continued dedication. I should may also, if I can, on these variants, there are uh, sneaky little uh, buggers because they have become more dominant as time has gone on. They've, they've evolution has worked in a sense, and they have outcompeted the original strain. 
So now the variants are 70, 80 percent plus of the total population of the virus. They've driven out the original virus because uh, of their evolutionary advantage, because they're more transmissible. So not only are they bad, they're getting worse because a higher percentage of the virus becomes these more dangerous uh, uh, viruses. So it's it's call, it's one of the reasons calling for our are really diligence here. Yeah. Well, uh, Governor, I don't know if you have time for one more question. I know you have to run. Yeah, go ahead. No, go one ahead. One more question. It's another email question. Now that the vaccine's eligible, eligibility has gone to 16 and older, what is the state doing to prioritize older adults' ability to get these appointments that they so desperately need? Well, uh, what we're doing is to talk into this group today to make sure that we encourage people to want to get the, the the vaccine. It's, you know, it's been largely available to now. We're just running into people that just, you know, so far haven't really wanted to get it. That's, that's no. the larger challenge right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you ought to be able to get this in a reasonable period of time at this point, given the situation we're in. We don't have a direct prioritization at the moment for older folks. We had it for three months and that allowed us to get, you know, pretty much everybody who wanted to sign up has done so. But we need more people to sign up now is, is the bigger challenge. That's why we're having this conversation. And yeah. I feel good about the ability of people at this or any age at this point in the upcoming weeks. We do believe supplies are going to increase over time. But so the most important challenge is, by the way, you can go to Vaccine Locator to help you find the, the easiest appointment. That's been used by, I think, one and a half million people already. It's been very effective. And if you don't want to use a computer, you can use a phone. Our max vaccination sites take uh, appointments over the phone as well. So if we do our jobs, we're going to get people where they need to be. Yeah. And then we really hear you with uh, you want this group to be sort of champions for vaccines, getting the vaccine. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anything you else you want? I know you have to run. Is there anything else you'd like to add or is I uh, really just want to thank you for your leadership on this. I We talked to our other state colleagues in other states, and we're in pretty good shape. Is, I mean, it's my non-scientific judgment about this. Uh, but we can always do better. And we, you're right, we got to get to that last 25% of the older folks. Any any parting comments from you, Governor? No, we are in good shape. We've saved thousands of lives because we've worked together. We've followed science. We've followed the rules. We've helped each other. And that's really good. But with this potential, this fourth wave developing, we just we've got to up our game to some degree. And everybody on this call can can really help out. And you know we've concentrated on talking to older Washingtonians to get the vaccine, but everybody needs it. So give your kids and your grandkids a a little talking to too. You did that when they were growing up. You can do it when they're adults as well and urge them to join us in this effort. I want to thank ERP. It is a supremely effective organization, and I look forward to our next discussion. Thanks a million. Super. Thanks for your time, Governor. Really appreciate your coming on today. You bet. Uh, you bet. You're just listening to Governor Jay Inslee. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of people on this phone, so he was quite a draw today. And with his message of wanting to get the folks on this call uh, to be champions for getting that vaccine. Uh, we've got quite a few people who are, want to ask questions, and we're fortunate that we have Secretary of Health Dr. Umar Shah still on the line. And I want to give Dr. Shah an opportunity to give some kind of opening remarks before we get into the questions. There's a ton of people waiting to talk to you, Dr. Shah, but if you want, would you like to just give some opening remarks uh, following the governor? Yeah, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. I want to just echo what uh, Governor said just uh, about how incredibly important AARP is and what you all do, but also what who you represent. And I also want to say greetings to everybody. Uh, I know this has been a, a tough road and an incredibly difficult, challenging, uh, not just uh, several months, but this year plus of all the different things that we've had to do and, and all the concerns and challenges we've had over last year. And you know, vaccines continue to be the promise for the future and the promise to get out of this pandemic. And as the governor mentioned, we, we just can't say enough about all of our partners on the ground and our, including our, our seniors and elders, uh, for doing what you know what they 
can do, as you know, two thirds, as he said, of people 65 and over are fully vaccinated. And more than half of those who are above the age of 50 have had at least one dose. So that's great news. But as he also said, is that we want to really ask you to be our champions to help us. It's not just about uh, if you've gotten your vaccine, that's fantastic and, and, and you, know, you know, kudos and all the, all the positive accolades uh, from the bottom of our hearts. But your responsibility role, your help, your assistance, being a champion to help others get vaccinated, whether it's in your, you know, your, your peer group or whether it's your family or whether it's friends or whether it's someone else, is, is so critical to help all of us. Ultimately, we're not going to be able to get past this pandemic unless we get as many Washingtonians vaccinated as quickly and as equitably as possible. And as the governor mentioned, we are absolutely concerned about the risk. Those uh, seniors, while you know we have uh, obviously vaccinated two-thirds of seniors, we still have a third who are not fully vaccinated. And we want to do everything that we can to get those individuals vaccinated, first and foremost, because they're at risk from this infection. But secondly, and secondarily, but equally importantly, uh, it's because ultimately we want to make sure we get Washington past this pandemic. Um, I know you asked the question about the fourth wave, and, and I did want to just say that uh, Governor is absolutely right. We are at the, at, the, at the cusp of this fourth wave, the beginning here, and that means that we have a couple of choices that on, in which direction this is going to go. One is that it's going to continue to go up. Um, that means all the tools that we use with our masks and our hand sanitizers and staying away from others and staying out of crowded indoor um, facilities or spaces, um, that that is going to, and if you, if you have symptoms, uh, that you get tested. That, in addition to vaccinations, that would be the way to, to um, fight this pandemic. But if we don't do this and we don't do those things that have helped us, then that, that curve would continue to go up and none of us want to see that happen. So let me stop there and just say thank you again uh, to, for having me on and we can take some more questions. Terrific. Thank you. If you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to Dr. Shaw. Um, and uh, he's the Secretary of Health for the state of Washington. And previously, we had Governor Inslee on. Let's go to the phones and take some questions. Sally in Seattle. Yes. Are you there? Yes. Hello. I'm there. Yes. Are you ready? You a- yes, we're okay, ready. Okay. I wanted to ask the doctor. I've had my first shot, and Saturday I'm having my second vaccination. And I've been told several times now that when I get the second vaccination, it can shed. And if I'm around somebody that hasn't had either one of the vaccinations, that I could give them the virus. And I just wonder how true that is. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that question. So, you know, the first thing that uh, that we say is that, uh, one, um, you're not fully protected until two weeks after your second dose. So I'm glad you're getting it Saturday. And two weeks after that second dose is when you're going to be fully protected. Uh, As far as viral shedding goes, you know, really what I would just equate it to is that until you're fully protected, you can still transmit virus because we don't, you know, we don't fully have you have you protected. We haven't fully uh, made sure that 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 uh, vaccine has taken effect to protect you from the virus. So really what I. One, it's not a reason not to get vaccines, so I want to make that clear. But number two is that just be careful again around others. And that two-week time frame especially, you've got to do all the things, the three W's, the T, and the V. The three W's are wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance. The T is testing if you have symptoms. And and obviously that would would be a little bit different after vaccine because, you know, there could be uh, the the, uh, side effect from the vaccine itself, which is a good sign that it's working. When I took the vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, I will tell you, I had uh, I had chills the next evening, and my wife uh, put me to bed, 
And uh, fortunately, we have three kids. So what she did is she put me to bed, gave me some Tylenol and said, you know, sleep this off. But I got the best sleep of, of my, my life because the kids weren't in the room. So that was fantastic. So I will tell you that, um, you know, it really, you can have uh, some side effects. Usually it's very minor side effects that will be on your arm when the injection site or you might feel some fatigue or you might have obviously the, 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 you know, the chills that I talked about. But after that one day or so, you're back to, to, to being, you know, up and out uh, at them. So I just wanted to make that comment. And then certainly you want to do what you can um, uh, with uh, the, the last, uh, when I said the, the three W's, the T for wash your hands, watch your distance, watch your distance, uh, uh, wear your mask. And then in addition to uh, testing is vaccinating. And so my message today is don't wait, vaccinate. And don't wait, help someone else get vaccinated. Those are the two messages I want to make sure to underscore. Great. Thank you very much for that. Let's go back to the phones now. Steve from Grand Coulee. Uh, yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Sure can. Uh, my question is, is my mother is 86 years old with dementia. I've had, I've had four appointments set up for her to get the shot. But, boy, she doesn't want to leave the room and go anywhere, and there's just no way I can get her out of the room. My question is, is there anybody that does door, comes door to door for elderly people like this? Yeah, th- thanks for asking that question. Um, I didn't catch what what county you were in. Grant County, Grand Coulee. Grant County. Got it, got it. Um, so a couple of things. First of all, thanks for your persistence in, 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 in trying to get her vaccinated. I know you're doing the right thing, and I know it's hard, my, my own – uh, mother uh, who is homebound. Uh, she's 83 years old in a wheelchair after a stroke uh, way back when. And I'll tell you, it is not easy. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just, just kudos to you. I know how hard it is. So thank you for, for trying. What I would say are a couple of things. One is that, um, and, I, and I did want to let everyone know about our COVID-19 uh, helpline as well. Uh, In addition to what the governor said, that we have vaccine locator and we have our vaccine uh, website for Department of Health, we also have a a helpline, which is 1-800, and I'll I'll repeat this a couple times uh, over the next 15 minutes or so, so if you don't get it the first time, it's 1-800-525-0127, 1-800-525-0127. So we are working with our local health departments and so, you know, I, I want to make sure that, one, that you can make that phone call to us and connect us so we can try to help you navigate how we can get somebody to you. Uh, number two is the health department in your local area, your local county health department is also working. We've asked all of them to work towards getting homebound uh, individuals, not just seniors, but others who are uh, not able to get out of the home and still need to get vaccinated for them to have plans to be able to do that. So if you, you don't have success on that local level, uh, we certainly want to make sure that you're making contact with us so we can do, um, you know, whatever we can to, uh, to get your mom help. Great. Right, thank you. If you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to an AARP Teletown Hall about the vaccine effort by the state of Washington. And we are very fortunate to have Secretary of Health, Dr. Umar Shah, with us. Let's go back to the phones. Karen from Spokane. Uh, yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Um, you have a- my question is, I um, found out about this gentleman in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, who prints out exemption cards for the vaccine and for mask wearing, and I wanted to know if he's running a scam or is this legitimate if he sends them to anybody in the United States who goes to his website which is exemption.cards, is this legitimate or is this a scam? Thanks for that question. Uh, you know, um, I, I, uh, I'm not familiar with that website. And, you know, I, I know that when you, when you get your vaccine, vaccine, wherever you get the vaccine, you're going to get a vaccine card. And if you go to the same site, you'll get 
both your vaccines on that same card um, listed. So uh, for all, I, mean, I can't think of any any purpose where that card is not good enough. Uh, so I don't know why you would need to go to a third party website to get a vaccine exemption. Uh, so I'm not sure what that is, uh, but I, I, could you repeat the website one more time so my team can uh, look at it and we can then share back with AAR, AARP if we think it's something of concern? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Shaw, I, I can lend a voice to this on the scam front. I think she said it was exemption.cards. Um, uh, the U.S. attorneys in several states have warned about these these cards where it's just a way to not have to get the vaccine vaccine and then be able to walk around without masks. And they're using this may not not, not be the case in this example exactly, but they're um, basically spoofing the U.S. attorney's office logo. Um, and those are clearly scams. But, it, you know, in those cases, it's an effort to just not have to wear a mask and somehow claim that you don't need to, even if the state laws say that you do. So I would personally put that in the category of scams. Let's go back to. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to let, let oh, me yeah, just go ahead. Right. Uh, yeah, just yeah. to let you know, my my trusted uh, uh, communications uh, uh, support here, Corey, just went went to the website and I would agree with you. I would not share information on websites like that because it, it can potentially get protected information and we do not want that kind of information scammed and used otherwise. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please call us at 1-800-525-0127, one 525 We can help you. And if we need to, we can also connect you with the Attorney General's office. Uh, and I know that uh, on my, my previous AARP uh, teletown hall, we had the Attorney General on. So I, I do want to say that that is something that we can also help connect you with if there is a scam or a concern for a scam. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the phones. Greg from Auburn. Hi, Gov. Or hi. My question is see, I kind of look towards the future. Um, how long are these vaccines going to be good for as far as how many variants can they handle before the before the virus ex outruns the uh, vaccine? Boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough one. Thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for that question. And, and Doug, thanks for giving me all the hard ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there, there's, been a, there's been a lot of talk about you know, how long the vaccine is effective. And and what I would put in, in, in just the, the picture is, if you don't get vaccinated, we know that immunity from getting infected, it has two uh, issues. One is that it may get you sick and, 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 and actually get you seriously sick and you may die from it. So that's that's one reason not to not to go the, let's let me just not get vaccinated. But the second is that the, the immunity wanes. What that means is that if you are just getting sick or exposed and get infected with COVID-19, that immunity waves. We don't know how long, three months, four months, six months, but eventually it's going to wane. The vaccine itself, and this is where we're still, obviously we're getting a lot more information now from the, you know, the, the vaccines in, you know, across the country and across the globe. Uh, we're now learning more. And so it, it's thought that it's months which is kind of a general nine-ish, some people are saying a little bit less, some people are saying more, 12 months, 10 months, 11 months. We don't know exactly is the answer. And why I say we don't know exactly is we're still learning a lot more about the longer-term impact of, remember, these vaccines have only been in place for a few months. So we don't know from how long the immunity is going to last. But they're safe and they're effective. And I think that's the key message, that they're safe and they're effective. So um, it is possible that there is going to come a time where we are going to be looking at a potential booster shot. Uh, it is possible that we are going to need to be looking at vaccines uh, from COVID-19 that are going to be moving into something like the flu shot on an annual basis. But this is all speculation because right now we still have a lot of work to do to be um, you know, to be vaccinating people 
today to protect them from this horrible disease. Okay, thank you. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Dr. Umar Shah, who is the Washington Secretary of Health, and we're talking about the coronavirus and the vaccine efforts within the state of Washington. Uh, Wayne from Everett, do you have a question for the doctor? Good afternoon. Yes, sir. My uh, question is, uh, if we are injecting uh, the COVID uh, you know, antibiotic or antibody into our systems, for those of us with uh, compromised uh, health, uh, what are the chances of us actually getting the disease? Uh, it seems that the news uh, is always talking about how people um, are coming down with uh, the COVID even after the uh, the shots. So my question is, uh, having had three heart operations, uh, what are the chances of me actually getting COVID from the injection? Uh, none. Uh, you know, the chances are really none. Uh, we're not injecting virus. We're actually in- injecting um, something that's going to cause your immune system to react. And that immune system reaction is what then protects you. It's as if the immune system has already seen this virus. And so what it does is it ramps up and allows you to get passive immunity, which is a fancy term of way of saying that you have um, have immunity against uh, 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 the disease without actually getting the disease. So uh, now as far as your... uh, other comment, which I think is a really important one, you know, immunocompromised or I've got serious health issues. You know, we do want to make sure that people are are protected. And if you have any question, please contact your healthcare provider. Please absolutely make connection with your healthcare provider. And and again, you know, ask that question. Uh, But the CDC has been very clear that this vaccine is effective and it's safe, and it can be used for people with a variety of health conditions. And that means that I, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain, almost 100%, I won't say 100%, but pretty certain that when you talk to your doctor, your doctor's going to say, go ahead and get vaccinated. So I think it's really critical that, that we remember that you are essentially protecting yourself from not just this you know, this, this horrible virus, but you're actually protecting people around you as well. That's great. We, we had a question come in, and I actually had this question, too, having just recently gotten my second shot. Um, so I'm going to become a champion for you guys. Get your, get your vaccine. Um, what do you do with the vaccine card? We were talking about sort of the fake, you don't have to wear your mask cards earlier, which we are probably a scam, but, but these cards are real. Do we... Like, should I hold on to my card? Do you think I'm going to need it to fly on an airplane or something? Or do you have a sense for that? Yeah, Doug, thanks for for that. That's a that's a great question. Uh, So the first thing is we're going to ask you to protect it. The second thing is we're going to ask you to take a photo of it. Some some way for you to have a copy of it. Don't just rely on the original card you had. Take a copy, make a copy, have it. Have it on, if you've got a a phone that can take a picture, take a picture of it so you've got it with you uh, so that you're not just, uh, you know, relying on that initial card they gave you at the, at the clinic or the, or the vaccine site. And then, and then your other question is really about travel and, and, and other things. There are a number of airlines when you're trying to go internationally that are increasingly saying that they are going to require uh, either test results or vaccine uh, confirmation, vaccination confirmation, before they let you board the plane. That's not the case domestically in the U.S. By and large, you can get on a plane uh, without, uh, in many instances, testing or uh, vaccines themselves. But you don't know down the road if that's going to change. So again, I would say this is you know given you know doctor's advice, but not you know, not giving it as a doctor, giving it as a, as the health secretary, which is to, to just get the vaccine, uh, because that gives you that, essentially it gives you that freedom. It gives you that ability. 
that if you had something where you had to, let's say, God forbid, had to go go somewhere and they were requiring something and you didn't have that vaccine, now you're stuck trying to go, either go get tested or you're trying to get a vaccine done, and we know that that's going to take time before you're fully protected. So that's why, as the governor mentioned early in the call, and I continue to emphasize, is your job is 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 not just to get vaccinated, but to encourage others around you to get vaccinated as well. Yeah, boy, that is that is really good advice, and we've heard that too from some of our internal polling um, that the people that folks trust most are their family and friends and their doctor. And you have given us good advice today about going to all three of those in various situations. Um, let's go back to the phone. I can't believe how many questions there are here. This is obviously a very hot topic right now. Um, Daniel from Spokane. Daniel, are you there? Are you there, Daniel? Okay, I guess not. How about Patricia from Yakima? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So my question to you is, okay, you keep talking about these different variances that are of the COVID that are coming out. And my question to you is, how sure are you going to be that um the, the these new variances are going to be covered with this new um, you know, virus uh shot that we've been getting and uh, that's kind of a concern to me. That's a great question. And, you know, I'll tell you, it's a concern to all of us. And we don't know uh, 100% if uh, the vaccines will be covering for all the variants that will be coming down the road. Uh, there are going to be a lot of uh, variants that I'm, I'm sure will be in the mix because that's what, guess what? That's what viruses do. They, they mutate, they change, they, they try to get around things. They try to infect more people. Um, you know, I will tell you that I, I use the, I use the, you know, the principle that at the end of the day, you've got it, you've got, if, if you, if you know something in front of you today that you can protect yourself from, and this has been as a, as an emergency room doctor, I've been 20 years uh, at the uh, Veterans Administration Hospital in Houston in Texas, and I've, I've taken care of our, our nation's veterans. And the one thing that I will tell you is that I always advise them, that individual that comes to the emergency department, if you have a way to protect yourself today from something you know is, is going to harm you, then you protect yourself from that. Now, if you aren't certain that a year from now that you're going to have something that's coming down the road, it's possible that whatever protection you did today will not protect you fully against that, that in this case, variant down the road. But at least you know that you are doing what you can today. Now, the second thing is that even if you get the variant, that that vaccine will help lessen the severity of the infection. That's the second issue. The third issue, and I think this is absolutely critical, that we have to remember that while variants will continue to, to be a part of the conversation, in fact, we're seeing variants across the state of Washington, this is why it's a race against time. And that's why we want people to get vaccinated today. We don't want them to wait. We want them to get vaccinated now. We don't want them to wait till a variant comes in the mix. And again, you have not been protected from that severe illness. And unfortunately, that's where the condition is, is that we've got a vaccine that helps you today. And we want to make sure we're doing everything we can for the future. The last thing I would just say, Doug, on this is that um, there is talk that uh, in the future that there, there may be a need to have uh, uh, possibly um, a, a booster that I talked about booster for waning immunity over time. There may be a booster that could cover additional variants as well. Well, right. Yeah, you did mention that. We're coming to the close here. We want to take at least a couple more questions, but I know you've got uh, to run. Let's go to uh, Barbara in Federal Way. Barbara. Hi, thank you for taking my question. This is my question. I had just received my second dose of Moderna today. However, my niece has not had one dose because of the fact that she is in remission for lupus. She's kind of afraid that if she has the vaccine that's going to wake the lupus up and cause her problems. I keep telling her it's safe, but she's not, she's kind of leery. 
So is it okay for her to take it? Yeah, so so she is uh she hasn't gotten one at all or she's gotten uh one and waiting for the second. Oh, Barbara. She's gone. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, no worries. We'll do lightning rounds. I'll just say that look, first of all, uh the vaccines can be used with a variety of people and and I, I would say even with someone with lupus, um you know, unless there is some uh, immunosuppression, which means with steroids or some other uh, therapeutics that your doctor is advising against a vaccine, which they should not be. But if there is some reason, that's why it's good to and important to connect with your healthcare provider in those serious, very complicated health conditions. But in general, the answer is that that individual should be able to get the vaccine safely. Yeah. Again, we do, we we go back to when in doubt contact your primary care physician, right? Absolutely. And, yep. 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 Let's take one yep. more question. And yeah, I'll do lightning chance. rounds. I'll go as fast as we can. No, we're, you're doing great. We're, we're clipping through here, but I know you, you don't want to stay on the phone forever. Let's go to John in Lake Stevens. John, are you there? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, so I've been waiting to get a vaccine shot. I haven't even had my first one, so what, what, what I, where, where can I go to get one? Ah, great question. So uh, go uh, if you got a computer, get access to the internet. Please just 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 put in the the search engine. Just put uh, vaccine locator Washington State, something like that, and that'll get you to our vaccine locator tool. You then put in your zip code where you are. It'll find you then where the the vaccines are in your area. And it not only just tells you where they are, they tells you if they have appointments, you click on it and it takes you to that website. If you do not have the internet, 1-800-525-0127, 1-800-525-0127. We've got translation services. We'll help you through a number of questions that you may have. Please call us. Otherwise, just put vaccine locator, Department of Health, Washington State, whatever you want to put in, it'll come up and you'll be able to get the information on where you can get vaccinated. Very good. Well, Dr. Shaw, I want to thank you for taking the time this afternoon and to Governor Jay Inslee. I want to give you an opportunity to just give us a final message here about uh, anything you want to talk about just to wrap up. You know, I, I, I just, first of all, Doug, I want to thank you also and just for everything that you are doing uh, I, I want to, you know, just remind everybody that, you know, back in January, you know, we were, we were, you know, really, uh, it was tough because we'd just gone through the holidays and a lot of vaccines were, were just not flowing into our state. We're still, it's a three-legged stool of vaccine supply and the logistics of getting vaccines into arms of people and vaccine demand. And we're doing everything we can to work with our federal partners on the supply piece. And I'm confident that in, in a few weeks we'll, we'll be in a different place than where we are now or several weeks uh, we'll be there. And now after Vax Day on April 15th, uh, all Washingtonians 16 years of age or older are eligible to get vaccinated. But we, we absolutely want to make sure that we focus and continue to focus on our seniors, our elders. And even today, I was in South Seattle, and I met uh, a gentleman, uh, Mr. Lee, and I'll tell you, he was 70 years old. He said, I've been waiting, and I just waited. And then today, I just decided somebody on my neighborhood said, well, come with me. I'm going to take you to the vaccine clinic. And I just went, and I got my first shot. And that's what we want to hear people do and see people do. And so thank you so much, Doug. Thank you to all you're doing, and obviously to our seniors and elders, not just vaccinate yourself, but please champion the importance of vaccines for others around you. Great. Thank you again. You've been listening to a Teletown Hall on uh, COVID-19 and and uh, Dr. Umar Shah from the Washington State Department of Health. You know, in the face of this crisis, we at AERP have been trying to provide information and resources to help all older adults and those caring for them. If you'd like more information, I'm just going to read the number one more time about the coronavirus in Washington. You can visit covidvaccinewad.gov or call 1-800-525-0127 for assistance. That's 1-800-525-0127. And I want to thank all of you who participated in this call. If we didn't get to your question, we apologize. 
you can also obtain additional information on our website at aarp.org forward slash WA vaccine. Thank you and have a great afternoon.